Well, good morning, and thank you for tuning in to another Tuesday broadcast. We're so happy that you've done so, and I uh, want to thank you for your continued support, as always. We can't do what we do without you, our online, online family, so we thank you for that. So what we'll do is make our confession of faith, and we'll get started with today's teaching. So repeat after me. I'm God's heir. I'm a joint heir with Jesus. All the promises of God are mine. And I receive all the promises of God by faith. Amen. Uh, if you have your Bible, turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And uh, we're going to read the scripture. And we're going to find out what God is doing in our lives. We're going to find out what God is doing in our lives. And even if you know, it's always good for us to remind ourselves of what God's will is, what God is doing, so that we can continue to cooperate with him, especially when times are difficult, when you're faced with adversity. We have to keep in mind that God has a purpose. And 1 Thessalonians 4 Verse 1, it says, Furthermore, brethren, we beg and admonish you in virtue of our union with the Lord Jesus. Uh, say this with me. I have a union with the Lord Jesus. Amen. So, again, this is an important statement because we don't want to just quickly read over that. It says, we beg you, we beg and admonish you in virtue of our union with the Lord. So that means we need to keep our union with the Lord in mind as we, re re as we read the remaining uh, part of the scripture. That you follow the instructions which you learn from us about how you ought to walk so as to please and gratify God. As indeed you are doing and that you do so even more and more abundantly attaining a yet greater perfection in living this life. So what, what, what is God doing in uh, our lives? God is working in us to make us more pleasing to him. One more time, God is working in you. And God is working in me to make us more pleasing to him. That's something that only God can do. Uh, scriptural reference or a, a companion to that statement in this scripture would be Philippians chapter chapter 2, uh, I believe verse 12, right around verse 12, 13. It says, for it is God who is working in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Uh, in terms of us as human beings doing God's good pleasure, it's dependent on the spirit of God in us. First of all, giving us the will, helping us to make the, the, the daily decision uh, to do what's pleasing to God. So without the Holy Spirit uh, sharing his will with us, we won't, we won't want to even do what's pleasing to God. We'll want to go the way of our flesh. So if you're a person that is doing the will of God, if you're living a life that's pleasing to God, just know that you're doing it because the, the Spirit of God is working in you, giving you the power, giving you the will and the ability to live a life that's pleasing to him. Apart from the Holy Spirit doing that, our lives will never be pleasing to God. Amen? So, we beg and admonish you in virtue of our union with the Lord Jesus, that you follow the instructions which you learn from us, about how you ought to walk as to please and gratify God, as indeed you are doing. So if you are living a life that is pleasing to God, what you can expect is God to, to, to come to you and demand more from you. God always wants more of us. God always wants more from us. If we're going to be pleasing to God, we have to make progress. Because if you think about it, who was, who, was the, who was the one who 
live their lives to please God. None other than our Lord Jesus Christ, who is now living in us. So God, God wants more of us so that Christ, so that Christ can live in us in greater and greater degrees. Amen. Just like John the Baptist, uh, he had the mindset that when Jesus came on the scene, he had to decrease so that Jesus could increase. Jesus lives on the inside of us, and it's God's plan for every believer to be conformed into the image of Jesus Christ. And so God has that in mind when he's asking more of us. Amen. So this is a process of the Christ being formed in us is a lifelong process. Uh, if I was a betting man, you know, for lack of better terms, you and I are probably going to live until the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. So up until that time, you and I need to be making progress in that transformation. And what will happen at the time of the rapture, uh, like it says in 1 John, I believe, chapter 3, when we see him, we'll be like him. When we see him, we'll be like him. Uh, John chapter 4 says that. John chapter 3 says, it is not yet apparent uh, who we shall be. So we don't want to wait up until the time of the rapture. And, and it's not like we're doing that. But we need, to make, we need to be making daily progress. And so the Spirit of God is the one who's encouraging us. He's challenging us constantly uh, to make progress. So, but these, this, this only happens in the lives of believers who are already making progress. Jesus said, those who bear fruit will be pruned for the purpose of those bringing forth bigger and better fruit. Amen. So if you're, if you're listening to this message today and it's resonating with you, it's, it's good news. You're receiving good news today because you are living a, living a life already that's pleasing to God. God wants to help you make your life even more pleasing to him. It is God himself working in you to make you more pleasing to him. Amen. So this is, this is a message full of good news. Amen. So let's look at uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. And as you're turning to 1 Peter chapter 2, I'm going to make reference to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1. The Apostle Paul is admonishing the church at Thessalonica, as well as us who are reading his letter. He's admonishing us to, uh, to attain a yet greater perfection in living this life. He's admonishing us uh, that, we, that, that our lives become even more pleasing to God than they already are. But he's, he's, he leaves that in general terms. He's, he's telling us what to do. Uh, he's admonishing us in what we ought to do. But first Peter, Peter in, the, in the, his first letter, uh, gets into the specifics as to what we need to do specifically to make our lives more pleasing to God. So now we're going to see exactly what we need to do uh, so that our lives are more pleasing to God. And we're looking at 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning at verse 4. The apostle Peter says, come to him. Come to him. So, what's, what, if, I, if I'm going to make my life more pleasing to God, if, if I'm going to attain a yet greater perfection in living this life, what is the first thing that I need to do? I need to come to him. Amen. Again, the Apostle Paul, in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1, he made this statement. He said, in virtue of our union with the Lord Jesus Christ, consider the things that I'm about to tell you. 
So in terms of us uh, living a more pleasing life to God, before God, a life that's more pleasing to him, in terms of us attaining a yet greater perfection and living this life, the thing that we need to uh, keep in mind, the lens that we need to look through as it pertains to us being more pleasing to God, as it pertains to us attaining a yet greater perfection, we need to look through the lens of our union with the Lord because it's, it's, it's him and only him that can make us more pleasing to the Father. And that's why the Apostle Peter, knowing that and understanding that, the first thing he says is come to him. Come to him. So come to him, then to that living stone, which men try and threw away, but which is chosen and precious in God's sight. That living stone is making reference to our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and really, it, sh it should give you a visual point of reference, a living stone, or is another way of saying or describing an altar. An altar in the Old Testament, uh, they, they built altars out of stones, piling, piling stones on top of another so that they can place an offering on top of those stones. So Jesus is refer referred to in this scripture as the living stone. And you and I know, if we know anything about Jesus, Jesus lived a sacrificial life. Amen. One of the primary animals that God instructed the children of Israel to sacrifice was a lamb. Especially uh, during atonement, it, it was a spotless lamb. So, and that was a shadow of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus was born into this world to be a sacrifice. Amen. His entire existence was sacrificial. Now he is the living stone. And in verse 5 it says, come and like living stones. Jesus is the living stone, singular. And we are supposed to come to him like living stones, plural. So that, that, that term, living stones, which is a way of saying sacrifice, Jesus, as our example, lived sacrificially. So you and I, like the living stone, uh, are supposed to live our lives sacrificially. Amen. We're, 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 again, our, our goal as believers, our destiny is to be like Christ. Amen. So if we're going to be like Christ, we too have to live sacrificially. So he says, come and like living stones, be yourselves built up into a spiritual house. Now, a spiritual house, again, uh, signifies sacrifice. And that begins with us coming to him. Come and like living stones, be yourself what? Built into a spiritual house. Now, the building is something God does. God himself builds us up. So, again, the first instruction is come. Come to him. Come and like living stones, be yourselves built into a spiritual house. I can't do the building. That's why the Apostle Peter tells me to come to him. Come to God. Come to God. And then when I come to God, and again, this is right along with what we've been teaching, uh, this, 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 sequ this divine sequence of events or this divine process that God leads us through. Uh, beginning with us being in trouble, God has a purpose for our trouble. God has a purpose for our trouble. Uh, the, the primary purpose or the primary thing that God does when we encounter trouble, uh, he uses it so that we no longer trust, in our, trust and rely and depend on ourselves, but we learn how to trust lean and depend on God. That's the God's primary 
purpose in trouble is to get you to a place where you're increasingly dependent on him and less dependent on yourself. Amen. So we find ourselves in trouble. Then God delivers us out of that trouble and draws us unto himself. Amen. And so when God does that, we have to respond and come to him like living stones. Be yourselves and built up. God draws us to himself so that we can be built up. And when we're built up into a spiritual house, uh, we can offer up. Now let's just read off, let's read uh, verse 5 in its entirety. Come and like living stones, be yourselves built into a spiritual house for holy, dedicated, and consecrated priesthood. Uh, priests under the Old Testament, they offer sacrifices on the behalf of God's people. Amen. So, uh, to offer up, to offer up. Now, let's say this together. I'll say it, and then you say it with me. God has drawn me to himself in order to build me up so that I can offer up. So let's say that, and we'll, 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 I'll make it short and simplify it by saying uh, built up to offer up. So on the count of three, let's say that together. One, two, three. Built up to offer up. God has to build us up so that we can offer up. And what we're offering is sacrifices that please him. Again, the Apostle Paul, and our pastor is using the Apostle Paul's writings uh, at the leading of the Holy Spirit so that we'll respond to God drawing us unto himself so that God himself can build us up so that we can offer up spiritual sacrifices that please God. So us attaining a yet better, uh, a yet greater perfection in living this life, us being more pleasing to God, uh, requires us offering up spiritual sacrifices that please him. Amen. God is pleased when we offer up spiritual sacrifices. Amen. Okay, so we see specifically what we need to do if we're going to please God. We see specifically what we're going, what we need to do if we're going to attain a yet greater perfection. And when the Bible talk, talks about perfection, it's just another way of, of saying being transformed into the image of the Lord Jesus. He was perfect. Amen. And it's God's, uh, God's ultimate plan and purpose for us to be increasingly like Jesus. Amen. Jesus lived a, sac a sacrificial life, and so we're called to do the same. But there's some specific spiritual sacrifices that you and I need to offer up as a lifestyle. So there's three of them. There's three main ones, and we're going to look at those three. But let me tell you, uh, let me give you that list first. Number one, we need to offer up our bodies. Number one, we need to offer up our bodies. Number two, we need to offer up praise to God. We need to offer up our praise to God. And then number three, we need to offer up our money to God. Amen. People are familiar with that because when we come and give money at our church, we call it an offering. And that's what it is. It's an offering. Amen. You know what? Let's take a look. Let's take a look at that particular offering. When I said that, I thought of Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. If uh, there's one, one aspect or one topic in the Word of God, one principle that is going to be attacked consistently more than any other principle, it's, uh, it's, it's principles involving or concerning finances. Uh, 
you see a lot of controversy these days about finances, about should we tithe or should we give offerings? But when something is so prevalent in the Bible, when there's so many examples of people giving money at the leading of God, then how can we ever question it? You know, God is the same, uh, you know, it talks about Jesus Christ being the same today, yesterday, and forever. So Jesus being the perfect imprint of the Father, uh, the Father is the same way. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So God isn't changing. Even he said that, you know, the Father said that, that he is the Lord and he changes not. So you can't change the word of God. So when we uh, give money uh, for the work of God, when we give money uh, in obedience to the written word and, uh, and in obedience to the leading of the Holy Spirit, it's, it comes under the category of an offering. It's something that we offer up. And we'll see a perfect example of that here in Acts chapter 10, beginning at verse 1. Now living at Caesarea, there was a certain man whose name was Cornelius, a centurion, a captain of what was known as the Italian regiment, a devout man who venerated God and treated him with reverent, reverential obedience, as did all his household. And he gave much alms to the people and prayed continually. So this is a man who we can clearly see offered up two of the sacrifices and really when you look at somebody who's living a lifestyle where they're, where they're giving much and they're praying much, you can also can come to the conclusion that they've also offered up their body. See, you, we live in our bodies. That's why we have to offer it up. If we're going to live a lifestyle of sacrifice, well, that obviously it requires you to also offer up uh, what you're living in, <clears throat> amen, which is our body. We have to offer our bodies as a sacrifice if we're going to live a lifestyle of sacrifice because we're sacrificing uh, everything that we do, we're in our bodies. So if we're living a, a sacrificial lifestyle, that involves our body. So we can draw the conclusion that Cornelius was living a sacrificial life because he said, the Bible says that he gave much alms to the people and he prayed to God always. It was a lifestyle. Now watch this. Verse 3, about the, the ninth hour, about 3 p.m. of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God entering and saying to him, Cornelius. Now, it says an angel of God. That means that whatever Cornelius was doing, and the Bible is clear as to what he was doing, he got God's attention to the, to the point where God sent an angel because the angel was from God. So this angel appeared to Cornelius on the basis of his prayers and his giving. Verse 4, and he gazed intently, uh, uh, gazing intently at him, became frightened and said, what is it, Lord? And the angel said to him, your prayers and your generous gifts to the poor have what? They've come up. So God is building us up to offer up. It's in a literal sense. The sacrifices that, that, we, that we offer, they go up before God. And when God, when these sacrifices come up before God, they're pleasing to him. Amen. I'll show you. In a minute, another scripture with regarding to giving that, that states that. Literally, it says this type of offering pleases God. Amen. So if our life is going to be more pleasing to God, there's offerings that we need to, we need to offer up. So that is a reality in our lives. And he gave intently at him. The angel became frightened and said, what is it, Lord? And the angel said to him, your prayers. And your generous gifts to the poor have come up as a sacrifice to God and have been remembered by him. So God takes an account of our prayers and our giving. 
Uh, you know, in Revelation, you'll see that there's an angel that collects our prayers in the Bible. Amen. And so, based on this scripture, our giving, our giving is an, an offering that goes up before God and he remembers it. So we can literally, through our prayer and our giving, build a, a memorial before God. Where God, anytime we pray after we've built up a memorial, God has something that reminds him of our sacrificial lifestyle. Amen. I want, I want my life to, lifestyle to be a memorial before God. Don't you? Well, if that's going to be the case, then we have to live sacrificially. And if we're living sacrificially, we're, we're living a lifestyle where these three different offerings, these three offerings that are pleasing to God, are part of our lifestyle. We're doing them on a constant and consistent basis. Our life is centered around us offering up these sacrifices. Show you another scripture where you can see clearly that us giving money according to the word of God and by the leading of the Holy Spirit is considered by God a sacrifice. Amen. Now turn to uh, the book of Philippians. The book of, book of Philippians chapter 4. And this book is really a letter, like a partner letter. I don't know if you've ever partnered with the TV ministry, and uh, they'll correspond with you through letters, and they'll thank you for your contribution, just like we do in, in the beginning of this broadcast, because we know that uh, without your partnership, you know, we can't really do what we do. Every, every ministry needs partners. And so the Philippian church, and, and, and to be specific, every, mem every ministry needs financial partners. You're really not a partner with a ministry if, if you're not supporting that ministry financially. See, partnership means you have a part to play. And uh, the part that we play, one of the significant parts that we play, is a part of offering so financial support. But you'll see that the money that you give to the church uh, sends up an order before the throne of God. And the money that you give to the, to the ministry, not just the ministry, but the money that you give to the minister, uh, sends up an odor that God remembers in his presence. Philippians 4.15, and you Philippians yourselves well know that in the early days of the gospel ministry, when I uh, left Macedonia, no church assembly entered into partnership with me and opened up a debit and credit account. So if you're a partner with this ministry or any ministry in the realm of the spirit, you've opened up a debit and credit account. Debit meaning a meaning of uh, a withdrawal and credit meaning a deposit. So we have a heavenly account that we deposit into since we deposit into that heavenly account through our offerings through our sacrifice, we also have the right to withdraw from it. It says, for even if that's an anaka, you sent me contributions for my needs, not only once, but a second time. It was a lifestyle. Not that I seek or am eager for your gift, but I do seek and am eager for the fruit which is increasing, which is increases to your credit, the harvest of blessing that is accumulating to your account. Now watch what he says. But I have your full payment and more. I have everything I need and am amply supplied. Now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent me, they are a fragrant odor of an offering and sacrifice which God welcomes, in which he, God, delights. So, partners, those of you who support ministries and ministers financially, that is a sacrifice that God not only welcomes, but he delights in it. He's pleased in that. So if, you, if, if, if you're living a life of sacrifice, 
in which you, you support ministries and ministers financially, you're offering up a sacrifice that's, that pleases God. Your, that's a part of your life that pleases God. So this is something that we have to continue to do, and we need to make progress in it, especially in these last days. we got to step it up in our support of ministries and ministers because you and I have a specific assignment as the church at large, and that assignment is to go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature, make disciples of all nations, and that the, the word of the, the word of God, the, the word of God being preached, is uh, the cornerstone. That's the foundation of what we call the Great Commission. Without the preaching of the word. Uh, people will not be able to come to the Lord. And God wants to bring many sons into glory. That's his ultimate desire, to bring many sons into glory. And if many sons are going to be brought into glory, that means they have to become sons first. They have to receive the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God, once he's in the heart of a believer, his cry is, Abba, Father, he now, he now uh, gives us the power to be the sons of God. But that all is predicated on the preaching of the gospel. So anytime that you give in support of the gospel, anytime that you give in support of the minister, it's a sacrifice that's pleasing to God. Now you have an opportunity to do that since we've reached the end of today's service. So those of you who are going to sow, just remember this is a part of your sacrificial lifestyle that is pleasing to God. So I believe many of you are going to take that step and obey God in the area of giving an offering, returning the tithes, and also giving an offering to, in support of our pastor. Because these are sacrifices that please God. And right now, the Spirit of God is leading you and I to, to make our lives even more pleasing. The Holy Spirit is leading you and I into a greater perfection in living this life. And giving plays a significant part in that. Amen? So, we have two options for you, our online family, with regard to your tithes and your offerings. Number one, you can go to Vinyl Christian Fellowship online you can you can do your giving online being that you're watching online that's the obvious choice but if you'd rather use the mail option we have that available for you to you find the address to the ministry at the bottom of your screen before we close out today's service just want to remind you our, our pastor is holding special meetings this week 7 p.m wednesday night thursday night and friday night Amen. So once again, our pastor is going to have special meetings right here at Vine Life Christian Fellowship. Wednesday evening at 7, Thursday evening at 7, and Friday evening at 7. We have we extend an open invitation to you, our online family, because ultimately our goal is to convert you to being our in-person family. Amen. So having said that, I uh, trust you were blessed by the word today. Enjoy the rest of your day, and God bless you. For more information on Vine Life Christian Fellowship, please visit our website at www.vinelifechristianfellowship.com. Options concerning the tithe, offerings, partnership, or favor challenge are located in the description box below. It is our hope that you have been blessed and enlightened by this message. As we begin our online journey, we encourage you to subscribe to this channel, ensuring that you will not miss future messages. On behalf of Vine Life Christian Fellowship, we would like to thank you for joining us. Have a blessed day, and we will see you next time.